I went and saw a business coach and I explained to him about my business. And this would have been 15 years ago, 16 years ago now. And I told him all about my business. He invited me to a seminar. He said, in your, put up your hand. Who thinks they've got a good business? I put up my hand and he looked at me in front of 100 people and said, Sean, you've got a shit business. You work 100 hours a week and you don't make any money. And I was in a room full of people and I just thought, yeah, he's right. I've got a shit business and I thought I had a good business. So joining me on the line today, I've got Sean Kelly. Uh, welcome to the call, Sean. Yeah, thanks, David. Thanks for letting me be part of this. Uh, yeah, no problem. So look, uh, today's really just about understanding who you are and what sort of business you're, you're in. And uh, I suppose just giving all the other clients of outcomes a bit of an insight into what, Sean, what makes Sean Kelly tick. So maybe yeah. start, start with a start and tell us a bit about the business. Uh, yeah, Resolve Image Solutions is basically a signage and... Um, really and I suppose an information signage sort of branding business yep. that pretty much does everything from you know doing a car wrap right up to a big massive pylon sign but we sort of deal with a lot of everyone from a local milk bar to a, a big brand agency or a um, advertising agency or a lot of other sign companies as well yep. but we sort of do a lot of real difficult signage jobs that other people just saw oh, too hard so we sort of go yep awesome let's 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 get up to the challenge yeah right so, right so, so i suppose the point of difference is really that you sort of do the signs that most people would not bother trying to do yeah like we'll do we're doing a sign at the moment at the top of um melbourne on a building that you know you can only access by abseiling and i've i've been over the top of the building and measured and hanging off the side of the building and you know, strapped in with my harness just for a bit of fun. Yeah. But um, I probably won't do the install personally because uh, five minutes up there is enough for me. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like all those things where people go, there's lots of permits and lots of complex engineering to make it safe. And uh, I get the people just sort of say, oh, that's too hard. So we like those jobs because, A, they, they're like a landmark and, B, is... Um, you know, they're complex and they lead to other work. You know, if you only take on the easy stuff, especially when times are tough. Yeah. You know, a lot of the stuff that was more difficult kept us going through the pandemic because there are two, three, six month projects, the world didn't stop. You know, it wasn't like, you know, you're planning six, 12 months ahead, not one or two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So look, you've been in the printing game for quite a while, haven't you? Yeah, probably since um, I started my apprenticeship in 1988 okay. into offset printing. And then probably 20 years ago, I got into signage because I saw all that standard printing. The industry was dying. It was all going overseas. And it's like, oh, I need to do something different. So I started a new business venture into signage because I thought I know printing, I know colour and I use my skills. And over the last 20 years, I probably learned a lot about signage that I didn't know, but, but the first three or four years were probably the toughest, but I knew a lot about printing and I knew a lot about colour and then it was more just the want to learn. You know, if it's, you want to learn, you'll learn. Yeah, it's interesting. So you sort of made a decision, you realised that the industry was going into a commoditized sort of market. That's right. And uh, rather than just sort of competing on price, you just sort of said, I've got to find a sector in this market where I can actually add value. Exactly, because I, I'd, I'd spoken to the guy I was working for, I was a production manager, yeah. So look, we should do this, we should do that. And he was just giving up saying, oh, it's too hard. Let's just, you know, throw in the towel sort of thing. And I was saying to him, no, no, there's a new market here. There's an industry like we should do this, we should do that. And he was just not ready for it. After six months of back and forth, he never could show me the books. He never could show me any information. He just kept saying, oh, you know what we do. And I said, no, no, I need to see financials. I need to see this. But in the end, I just said to him, look, you got three months or I'm leaving. And then at the end of three months, I just resigned and said, I'm starting my own business. And he was like, no, you can't. Well, why don't we do this? I said, too late. I've given you six months. I'm, I'm going to go on my own. So mm. yeah, it's one of those things that, you know, you give someone an opportunity, but he didn't really want to do it. So I figured I'll just go and do it myself. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like there's a couple of instances where you've had to make a decision and yes. uh, I suppose the longer you leave it, the worse things get. They don't really change. Yeah, yeah. And there were lots of 
all the technology was changing. So it went from we used to do film and proofs and things to everything was going, the printers were going direct to plate. So all our industry was dying that we were like a middleman industry for the printing industry. Yeah. And so we figured, oh, our industry's like just going all computerized and we're losing all the art form. Mm -hmm. Hence why I, I changed direction because I could see it was just going worse and worse and yeah. prices were going down and it was just ruining the, the market. So places were going bankrupt. So I just thought, oh, I've got to change direction. Yeah, fantastic. So let me ask you, Sean, on, on a sort of bigger note, uh, what's been some of the best business advice you've ever received? Uh, well, the best one was when I, the first time I ever at my last, I had another business for 11 years before this business. Yeah. And I went and saw a business coach and I explained to him about my business. And this would have been 15 years ago, 16 years ago now. And I told him all about my business. He invited me to a seminar. He said, in you, put up your hand. Who thinks they got a good business? I put up my hand and he looked at me in front of a hundred people and said, Sean, you've got a shit business. You work 100 hours a week and you don't make any money. And I was in a room full of people and I just thought, yeah, he's right. i got a shit business and I thought I had a good business. Yeah. So that was probably the biggest lesson because I didn't know my numbers. He asked me, what's your break even? You know, what's your average dollar sale? Yeah. What's your this? And I couldn't answer anything. And I'd been in business three or four years. And yeah, I was great at what I did, but I didn't know anything about business. Yeah, right. So that was my biggest wake up call to realize, hey, you know, you got to know your numbers. Yeah. Um, and, and really, I think having a coach is whether you know enough to not need a coach, you don't have an AFL team who doesn't have a coach and say, oh, we won last year, we'll just do the same. So having someone to make you accountable, whether that's a business partner or a business coach or some a mentor, yeah. somebody to actually make you accountable for weekly, monthly, whatever you do, rather than just look at the end of the year and say, hey, how do I go? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it is a numbers game in the end, isn't it? And if you don't have your eye on the numbers. That's you right. Really okay, if, you, if you're checking, if you're following your numbers every month, then you can make decisions quickly. But if you're checking your numbers once or twice a year, yeah, like it could have been you should have made a change six months ago, that's too late. Mm. So I think that was where I first sort of had a business coach and then, once I left, I started another business for a couple of years and then I thought, no, I need a coach because I'm at a point now where yeah. it's like I need to be accountable. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it's an interesting distinction. So let me ask you one last question. Books or podcasts or any sort of uh, people that you follow, have you got a favourite? Um, not really, no. I, I, watch, I watch a lot of podcasts and listen to audio, like I've got that audible and listen to a lot of business. Yep advice and even life advice but i do follow um his name's jocko willenick yeah. he's like an ex-military guy yes, and it's yes, really yes. just about teams and leading teams and motivating people i find that one very interesting because i want all the people who work for me like accountable mm -hmm. and to sort of run their own departments so i have found that quite interesting how to how to lead yeah. people and it's not by yelling and screaming and forcing opinion it's just by making them giving them ownership i think that's the biggest thing you give someone ownership they are much more yeah much more encouraged and much more sort of gonna basically look after it and treat it as if it's their project rather than your project so yeah gotcha what was okay. the, he, he had a book as well didn't he that he's got a, quite a few books but yeah. i've just been listening to the like audio while i'm driving okay because yeah. i'm in the car so i I put on the audio books and I find because I'm busy, you know, you work long hours and plus I've got hobbies. I'm not sitting down reading much. So I found yep. the audio books is very helpful for me personally. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Look, one last question for you. Advice for other people in business in this current environment, what sort of advice would you be giving people? I guess, um, I mean, firstly, stay positive. Yeah. Um, because it is a pandemic, but as I've said for to other people, it's six months, 12 months, it's two years out of a 20, 30 year business cycle. So yeah, while it is disruptive, I feel like it is short term and the ability to change, to, to move and navigate and change yeah. direction and not just think, oh, I'm, I'm screwed. You know, keep thinking, what else can I do? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I think if you just give up, it's too easy to just give up. And I think sometimes people miss the whole idea of being a business owner, which is finding where there's a need or a problem mm. and solving it. And if yeah. you solve it, you make money. And if you don't solve it, you find another problem. <laughs> exactly, you- exactly. So, I mean, we had issues with the last lockdown, whereas we couldn't install half the jobs we made. So yeah. um, at the end of the day, it was just like, okay, there's certain things we still can do. We can still make stuff. We just can't put it up. Mm. So it was about when we come out of lockdown, like getting like six or seven subcontractors all booked, all ready to go so that we could start invoicing straight away. Yeah. Yeah. So there's always something you can do. Yeah. Yeah. And often for some people who are in total lockdown, I said, look, you might not be able to do any work, but you can certainly build your relationships. So yes. Yeah. If, if your industry is closed, there's a lot of people out there that are sitting around twiddling their thumbs. So get on the phone and start talking to them. <laughs> yeah, talking to them or having a Zoom meeting or yeah. just checking in with them. Like we tried to check in with every client like once every couple of weeks just to say, hey, how are you going? Yeah. And they go, first thing they say is, oh, look, I don't have any jobs at the moment. You go, no, that's fine. I'm just making sure you're okay. Yeah. You know, because some people were, we found were feeling depressed or lonely or, you know, yeah. especially the ones that work solely from home. Yeah, yeah. They put a lot of pressure on people. So I think like, Sometimes do people forget that we actually in the human industry and this Yeah, we are, yeah. Relationships. You yeah. Know, yes, we're into signage, but more importantly, we're into relationships. And yeah, you know, some of the people were struggling. So, you know, we had a few people post on sort of like their their clients, but they're also like on Facebook and LinkedIn and some of the language they were using, I was a bit concerned. So I did ring a few and say, look, I just want to make sure you're okay. Like the the words you're using, the language you're using is a bit concerning to me. And they go, oh, look, I'm, a, I'm a, yeah, I'm a bit down, yep. but yeah, you've cheered me up. So that was good. And we had a couple of clients that were just down and it was just reaching out to say, hey, you know, if you need anything, we're here. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's not about work. It's just about making sure they're okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's just simple, isn't it? Yeah. And that's all relationships, you know. Yeah. So, because you can tell sometimes by the way they... They post things that are oh, they're struggling. Yeah, there's little indications there. Yeah, like little calls for help, but sometimes they go un- unheard. Yeah, it's like just a negative, negative sort of posts that you thought, oh, I think this person's struggling. You know, yeah. so and we even had that with some staff. You know, so nice. yeah, interesting. So really, just about making sure that people are okay. Because I, th- I think you're right. It's just a it's a cycle, isn't it? I suppose we'll get Yeah, even had a couple of staff members that were um, didn't want to get vaccinated. Yeah. Um, and, you know, one of them was like, oh, no one cares about me, no one this, no one that, you know. So he sort of, we stood him down, but I, I, I've, I've still messaged him once a week just to see, are you okay? Yeah. Um, I said, besides work and if you come back or if you get vaccinated, I just want to make sure you're okay. Yeah. So... He, I sent him a message Friday and he said, thanks for thinking of me. Because yeah, it is a tough call. I mean, we've been put in a situation where it's mandated. Exactly. And it's not but, It's not you to making no, a decision. It's the government basically saying That's that. right. And I didn't force anyone. I said, because they said, what should I do? I said, well, I can't make that decision for you. Yeah. But, you know, you have to make the decision. But the implication is obviously the consequence of you not having it means you can't come back to the office. Yeah. Uh, Temporarily, I would suggest. Temporarily, yeah. And one guy who seven years of license and last three or four years of this business. Yeah. He wasn't going to have it, but then he had last week off and he went and got it. So he's back at work this week. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. He rang me and said, If I have it, can I come back to work? And I said, Yes, of course. <laughs> so, so there you go. Yeah, because he's obviously thought about the consequences and Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I think that's a tough gig, but yeah, have being approachable. As a business yeah. owner and letting people have that conversation is really key, isn't it? Well, it is because I think, um, you know, you don't know anyone's internal struggle. Yeah. So just telling him that we're there for him and, like, we'll keep his job open. And he had eight weeks leave. So it's like, use your leave. Think about it. You know, you decide what you want to do. I won't I won't replace you until Christmas. So you've got some time. But he only took a week and then he was he got vaccinated and he's come back. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, well, that's a, that's a good news story. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So we're in, we had three that didn't want it, but it's now only one. Yeah. So, yeah, fantastic. 
And, and in the end, it's just how you manage people, isn't it? Because you can be quite sort of, uh, um, I suppose, abrupt about something like that. Or you well, can... yeah, if I just said, well, too bad, you're sacked, then yeah. we wouldn't have got him back. Yeah. So it's, it's, and he's a sensitive soul, one of them. And it's like, okay, well, we know he's a sensitive guy, so you've got to give him a bit of space. Yeah. Very Whereas good. some people are okay with just, here's are the facts. Mm you know, like it or leave it, but he was more, you just had to massage him into making it his choice. Yep. Yep. Very cool. And one last question. You mentioned that you got some hobbies. Yep. I'm curious. What are they? Um, well, martial arts, but I've been doing um, oh, probably for 30 years different martial arts and the last oh, probably 10 years, even though I'm 50, I'm, I'm into MMA and, um, and nice. grappling like submission wrestling. So, you know, that keeps me busy three or four nights a week. Yeah. And uh, it's my release. You know, you can be stressed, wound up, but I go and wrestle 25-year-olds for two hours and suddenly I feel a lot better. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, oh, I enjoy it, you know. People go, oh, you're crazy, but I just think, you know, it's a it's a stress relief. Yeah. Look, so, I, I think sometimes people under underplay hobbies because they feel yeah. like there's, there's too much going on. I've got too many things to deal with. And you go, well, you only live once. And uh, if you don't have some sort of uh, like way of releasing your stress or, or enjoying the sort of yeah, yeah. times. And the, and the good thing about sport in general is most times you've got to live in the moment. You yes. can't actually be like, sparring yeah. with someone and thinking about oh what am i going to do at work tomorrow it's like you got to live in the now yeah. and that's the best thing about most sports is you've got yeah. to live in the moment yeah absolutely. so all your stress goes away so i think that's that's a really good thing is to have a release of some sort yeah absolutely you know whether that is reading or whether it is jogging or whether it is going to the gym or yeah the more intense it is i think the more you have to be present though yeah, that's why I like something that's sort of extreme because yeah. you've got to be fully in the moment and you can't think about work. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think so, everybody needs some sort of hobby or interest, some interest. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, Sean, uh, look, uh, mindful of time. Thanks so much for uh, sharing some of the insights into Sean Kelly. I'll yep. get that up into the uh, Facebook Inner Circle, make sure you get tagged and uh, we'll look forward to catching up soon. Awesome. Thanks, David. All right, cheers. See ya. 